my name is Roman DeSalvo. I'm the artist who made Apex Chariots. I live and work in San Diego. I think I just had, from the earliest age, a predilection in that direction. I always liked to kind of have some quiet time by myself focusing on a project, a drawing, maybe some, some project with baker's clay or carving silk. My mom was good at setting me up with crafts to do. And then in school, I always seemed to often would be like the students sort of singled out when, when there was some projects that like a drawing I might have done would be sort of like the exemplary one. And uh, so I always had that feedback at a young age. You know, feeling like I, I was good at something and I liked it. It led me in that way from very young and I just have always been on that track. My kind of MO for, for years has been playing with everyday stuff and and have, having a surprise kinds of encounters with things in the everyday world. And so I've always sort of tried to um, essentially replicate or mimic somehow um, everyday things and uh, useful things. You're, you're surrounded in the world by things to be used, to sit on, to, to switch, to so those, these kinds of interactions of use has been uh, something I've been interested in and, and tinkering with and kind of twisting to have some, some pleasant surprise with. And that's uh, led me to, you know, increasingly more technically sophisticated kinds of devices, maybe. And so, interesting machines, just because machines are, we of course, surrounded by machines, so I have, over the years, developed a facility with mechanics. I made these pieces, just, uh, piece by piece, but it started with initially drawings, sketches, where I sort of invented the idea on paper first and then, and then made a small model to see if the mechanics would actually work, and it seemed to work in a, in a basically a, a, a really crude, simple model. And then I, uh, then I did a prototype, and I knew I wanted to use rattan, and I had had some experience bending rattan before to make some to make a chair, and uh, um, so the rattan bending involves a heat gun and water to soften the wood where you want to bend it. You, you know, have to it's a kind of a two-man job to bend large pieces. The, 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 uh, the thick pieces are definitely uh, you got to clamp it in the vise, and one person pushing on it while the other person's putting water and, and heat on it. And uh, then all of the mechanical parts are, are aluminum stuff that I just cut with a, um, a bandsaw, drill with a drill press, file. Um, it's just, uh, and it, you know, the, there's some things to do to polish stuff that gives it, a, gives it may, maybe a more refined look than, than its origins would suggest. <laughs> Tricycle is basically what this is. When I was um, originally thinking of this vehicle, it was at the same time I was thinking of the legway. Another, I was trying to kind of come up with a, a number of inventions um, for a, a, an earlier idea of a, a children's museum project. I was looking at a, a, a book of projects for kids that their parents could help them with. Kind of a Boy Scouts book or something. I think it was called "101 Things You Can Do in a Shed," and and, uh, and there was this picture of a kind of plywood nailed together little vehicle that operates like a train car, mm -hmm. but it didn't steer. It was just this thing. You had a little wooden bench, and you could sit and and uh, operate a lever like this to make it go. And I thought that that was a. Uh, good place to start and I was talking with a friend about this idea and 
and uh, we thought that it was possible to also um, have the same thing steer it. And then that's how it evolved. And it, but just what, that, what gave me the chariot idea that that form, I mean, the, this whole sort of fairing surround is not really um, integral to the driving mechanism, but it does become a kind of structure for the whole thing. Um, but that that idea was basically because of the hand position. It sort of reminded me if you were going to be operating something like this, that you, it's sort of like you, you're holding some reins. So I thought, let's make it a chariot. It's, it's always changing. It's such a big question. It seems like everywhere I go, I can some see something that intrigues me and I can think of how to, to work with that. Lately I'm inspired a lot by trees, tree parts, that, you know, wood, you, some people call it wood, but wood typically I think of as like, it's been milled, this is, these are tree parts um, that, I, that I've been working with. But as I was talking about earlier, the whole um, interest in kind of surprise in everyday life that's led to so much because um, basically everyday life is full of stuff to, to respond to and think about and to um, I guess enhance in, in, in interesting ways. So. Two things that interest me are, like I said, trees and and the built environment, and I thought maybe a, a kind of arborist slash architect, like so I could do cool tree houses, be, be good to the trees, but also interesting spaces to inhabit. It's sort of naturally evolved. That it's not that I sort of set out to make work for kids, but it just, I think it so happens that kids have a, uh, um, a particular excitement about our interactivity with my things. My, my work tends to appeal to the kind of interactive impulses of kids. And the other thing I like about this is it's, it's not just a kid's place. I think parents really are an important audience here too. And this, uh, the work here appeals to me as, a, as an adult audience. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's a pretty um, energetic and exciting journey. When I was invited to, to consider what to do uh, along the lines of the, the show Animal Art, um, I, I uh, started to think about the, the chariots in terms of the, that there's a missing animal. Um, it's not being drawn by a horse, but that there's the, the, the horse has been replaced by the power and a kind of the ingenuity of the human, and that this sort of kind of brilliance that humans has puts them at basically the apex of, of uh, all uh, fauna in the history of the world. So uh, um, the this then this position of our, our kind of um, preeminence as, as an animal species it got me thinking also about bygone animals and maybe our culpability in some of that. The other thing was there's a sort of nostalgia for like old things, chariots, hand, handmade, um, simple mechanical things. I know it's a very playful project but there's a melancholy aspect and kind of, this is a tribute to these, these animals that we'll, uh, that we'll never see again. In some cases, it's debatable. For example, with the golden toad, um, global warming is is a uh, is probably a culprit. But there's a, there's been other factors, and and there's like this some um, sort of parasite that has had a, and but that, that the flare up of that parasite, which has been ravaging amphibians worldwide of all kinds, is uh, maybe has something to do with rising temperatures. It's not always direct, but in the case of the stellar sea cow, the thylacine, um, and passenger pigeon, 
in Tacopa pupfish is very, very direct that, that we, we kill these animals off. <clears throat> Basically, I think there's just a pleasure in driving them around and racing and getting, getting physical, getting some, some sort of uh, pleasure and fascination with how they work and um, maybe how they're made and th th that stuff can be where it ends. And I think that's a, a, a totally um, satisfying experience that people can take away. I think it'd be nice to, for people also in the design of this trip, I wanted to have a, uh, a way of kind of speaking to the street and that people can see in and see that there's a sort of, um, it, it, it attracts people's attention. And so even just passing by, there might be a kind of like um, a sense of wonder that people that don't even come into the museum might uh, might be just a nice thing to, to see that way. But then, then the whole thing to do with the extinct animal tributes, um, if people even notice that there's these animals and, and these dates, in which the, these are the last known dates of these animals living, maybe, you know, parents, kids, they can start to, to wonder and look into it and maybe find things out if they're interested in, in it. Um, it's, it's just another another thing to learn about.